Welcome to the Rockstar Mentor Podcast, the podcast to inspire you and bring the kickstart you need to crush it in the art industry. We'll bring you creative insights, inspiring interviews, valuable resources, and art marketing, along with decades of experience to provide you the strategic approach to unleash your creative talents and rock your inner entrepreneur. Now, your creatively energetic host, Sonia Paz. Hey, greetings, everyone. Thank you so much again for tuning in to the Rockstar Mentor Podcast. And I am proud to say this is episode one. So I am your host, Sonia Paz. I am a professional artist, entrepreneur, marketer, designer, and I have been creating art and branding my own business for almost 20 years. And I'm excited to bring you the Rockstar Mentor Podcast. And this is our first official episode. And this episode is going to focus on meeting and greeting the ultimate meet and greet. And I'm not really talking about the meet and greet on customers on this episode. I am talking about meeting and greeting other artists, movers and shakers in your area, specifically your local area. Now, I realize that not everyone is in an area where there's highly populated people in in a large area like San Jose or New York City or Miami, Florida. But I want to let you know that I do understand that there are a lot of artists that are introverts and aren't necessarily up for meeting other people. However, if you are tuning in to this podcast, it means that you really want to learn what's going on, who to meet, who to greet, and how to really capture networking and the essence of personal relationship building in your artist community. Not everyone can be tenacious, but I'm going to teach you how to be assertive and aware of what's going on in your local area. And that goes for tips and tricks and ideas and methods on how to be remembered and seen in your art industry. And I have been in business long enough to where I know that it's really critical to have face-to-face communications with people in your area. You really, really want to connect with other artists and you really want to meet and greet other artists regardless of what their level is or their expertise or even how popular they are in their own network or in the local community. And regardless of what their level is, whether it's just starting out or if they've been in it for a while, everyone had a beginning. Everybody had beginning stages in their art career. And I think now with social media, and with all the different ways to sell your art online and other shows or how to be aware of other shows in your area, I think it's a lot easier now than when it was when I started out way back in the day. So if you really want to connect with other artists, you really need to get it out there. And this doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a beginner. This is going to benefit you through the long run in so many ways at so many levels. So I've put together five basic rules on how to have a successful meet and greet in your artist community. First thing, number one, is attend art gallery openings of your peers. Go to local art walks in your area and go to art association meetings and attend art festivals in your area. And when I say in your area, I don't mean just down the street, maybe within a 20 mile radius of where you live or where your studio is. And meet other artists, network a bit, Go to them, let them know who you are, introduce yourself, and let them know how excited you are to meet them. When I say that, I'm not saying go to their busy booth or to their art opening and start smothering them with a handful of business cards and asking them to look at your art. Be humble, simply introduce yourself, tell them that you're an artist in the area and that you really admire what they're doing because there's going to be a day sometime in the very near future When this will come full circle and others will come back and remember you, admire you, and connect with you on so many levels. Number two, join local networking. So perhaps this is your local chamber of commerce that has a group of networkers that meet on a monthly basis or a business networking meeting in your area put together by perhaps a local merchants association in a town where you live or where you are near And you want to engage with other people in all areas of business. And I'm not talking just artists. I am talking about all areas, whether it's people in the insurance industry or their mortgage people or realtors. Perhaps you have attorneys, you have retail stores that want to get involved. Maybe other public speakers in your area where you might want to entertain and work with them or meet and greet with them. 
perhaps ask to even help them out at an event that they're having. The key is just networking and get it out there. And for the ladies out there, there are many women entrepreneur business groups that will take one specific business to be in their BNI group, their business networking group. And they would love to have a creative individual in the group because I'm sure that most of the other folks in those industries their business is insurance or their business is interior design. It may not necessarily be creative. So this is where it really will benefit you. And join a group that you feel comfortable with. Go to one. Ask to be a guest at the first meeting or two so you can sort of get a handle on who's there and just get really familiar with it. And keep it to smaller groups, anywhere from 15 to 25 members. I really wouldn't go full force and join a group with over 100 members because you will get lost. The meet and greet will be diluted. And smaller groups are more intimate and most likely to have better networking connections. This will also not only allow you to retain the information that is provided that you're giving to them, but it's not going to become so convoluted that they may forget who you are or you might forget who they are. And you want to have a key relationship because you're going to see these folks again at another event because chances are they do belong to more than just one organization or one networking group. And if you meet them on a smaller scale in a smaller group, you'll be able to remember them. And that is step number one in just starting and building that really great relationship. Number three, perhaps you live in an area where there is not a lot of art groups that are established. Well, <laughs> Heck, who's stopping you from starting your own group? One of the best groups that I can recommend to start off with is perhaps a small meetup group in your area of other artists. Start reaching out to artists and inviting them to join you. Maybe you can meet on a weekly or monthly basis and discuss amongst one another where you are with your artwork and maybe get some tips and ideas about where other shows are in your local area. Maybe there's a museum show or perhaps there's an art and wine festival. Maybe you're a watercolor artist and you want to connect with other artists that do watercolors and start a meetup group for that. Or perhaps you are a jewelry maker and you want to get a group together so you can talk about all the facets of jewelry. Well, <laughs> no pun intended. Or perhaps put together a show or a fundraiser to enhance the visibility of a group. The possibilities are truly endless. All righty. So we have number four. And perhaps you're just at a level right now and you're really not ready to meet face to face. And that's fine. Baby steps are totally OK. Look for local online groups in your area, perhaps on Facebook. I started out many, many moons ago with a group that was introduced online based on eBay, and it was called EBSQ. It's an online art community that's really affordable to join, and you are surrounded by other visual artists. This group started when selling on eBay was in its infancy, somewhere about 99, 2000 time frame. In fact, I believe I was member number seven when this group was started out by John Seed, who was an artist based out of Southern California. John wanted to make a difference in how people were buying and selling art online. This group made great strides for artists who were selling on auction sites like eBay, and John worked closely with eBay at one point to establish the categorization for self-represented artists. And he worked with them... And he's totally responsible for having these categories benefit self-represented artists. And I know that it may not seem like a big deal at the time, or maybe you don't even think about it if you're selling online and looking at the self-represented artist category. However, artists who are self-representing and getting out there and selling their own work, it, this was an amazing feat. Nothing like this had ever been developed before, and that in itself really captured how we're selling our art today. And I really want to give him a giant standing ovation applaud for breaking through those barriers on these awesome levels. And I feel so fortunate to not have only been part of this group on eBay selling during this establishment of self-represented artists selling online, but feel extremely honored to have John as my friend throughout all of these years and to know that what might have been small efforts for him at the time really changed the way that people do sell their work online and that EBSQ has also changed over the past years. And John really wanted to further more of his career and he handed off the reins of EBSQ over to Amy Gillingham and her husband, Bill, and they continue to carry the flame for artists. 
and have a place for them to go and embrace other artists online. So this website is great support for so many artists to overcome fears, be amongst other artists that are just starting out, or maybe they've been in the art industry for a while and have not really established some online presence. So EBSQ is really perfect for that. And you're able to have a small portfolio online and share your work. And again, this is not only benefiting artists who are just getting out there. This is benefiting artists who are new and maybe new at just the whole social media and internet aspect. It's evolved over the years and it's still an amazing resource. And you can visit them online at ebsqart.com. Since EBSQ, there has been a ton of other websites that will help you launch your artwork out there like Etsy and Fine Art America. They have community forums on there that you can get yourself into and start networking with other artists online. But I can assure you that making a difference in your local community as an artist with other creative individuals is one of the best ways to start out meeting people and meeting and doing the face to face. Now we have number five. So let's say you've gone ahead with the first topic that we talked about is going out and meeting other artists at art walks and art gallery openings and other art related venues. And you've joined a local group in your area. So what do you take with you? First and foremost, take a great positive attitude. Just be excited that you're going to meet other artists and you're going to network and take a friend with you. Sometimes it's really lonely to go to these things and you might want to have a person that you can talk to and just not feel as though you're stranded out there. So between a good positive attitude and bring your boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other, just a good friend with you, make it a girl's night out, make a date night out with an agenda and simply go with the attitude that you're there just to meet other people and just kind of see what they're doing and how they're interacting with others. And don't take an entire suitcase full of data, like excessive amounts of brochures about yourself or your profile book of images, your iPad with your art slideshow on it or your big giant portfolio. And I'm sure you've heard that term, less is more. Just a small pack of business cards with information about who you are and what you do. But you really want to sell yourself with having a really great positive, great energy personality and the best tools that you'll need to have with you when going to face-to-face -face online groups or art exhibition openings or networking with other artists is a business card. Don't go unprepared. Have business cards to hand out that will have your pertinent information on it, your name, your contact information, how you wish to be contacted. If you have a website, get it on there. And most importantly, have an image of one of your pieces of artwork or your jewelry or your sculpture or whatever your art is, have an image of it on your business card. I cannot express enough how frustrated I get when I receive a business card from an artist and there's no image on it. I don't know what you do. Some people think, oh, well, they'll just go check me out online. No, I'm not. And I'm going to tell you why, because a picture is worth a thousand words. And this is the beginning of your brand. This is critical information. It's effortless to get something as simple as your artwork on your business card with your contact information, your name, your phone number, your website. If you want to put your email on there, go ahead. I have a specific way of getting information and connecting with people. So I don't actually put my email address on there for a few reasons. One, I don't want to get spammed just for the sake of being spammed. But if I'm giving someone my email, then we've had a conversation and we're getting connected and I will handwrite it in on the back. That's my own thing. That's going to be an entirely different podcast on marketing. So we'll go over that at another time. But I'm going to call you all rock stars. So rock stars, I have been in business long enough to where I see people making the ultimate mistake when meeting with somebody. Before you give them a business card, engage in some conversation. Have a quick chat about what they're doing and what business they're in. And even though you might think that there's no connection there, they will remember you because you have offered an interest in their business. And most importantly, business cards. You're going to want to engage and you're going to want to trade business cards with that person. Now, let me tell you, business cards and marketing collateral can get on the pricey side. And if you do enough events and you start meeting and greeting with others, you will go through these pretty quickly. So only provide one business card to one person. And I have seen this mistake over and over where somebody is new to the group they're new to the networking, they're new to artist uh, meet and greets, and they go ahead and they hand 
three or four business cards to someone and they give them the big, hey, this is who I am. Take a few of my cards and hand them out to your friends and let them know about me. Big giant fail with a capital F. That's the four letter F word here, fail. I've seen it time and time again. Those cards end up getting left on the table at the networking event or at the artist meetup where you're at. It's a waste of money and they will remember you as being the overzealous artist who's desperate to get their work out there by simply asking others to get their name out for you. Don't do it. One card is sufficient. This is where the relationship building begins and you don't want to put the nail in the coffin just from the get-go by giving out cards as if you were some sort of a 21 blackjack dealer in Vegas. So if at all possible, refrain from going there. And you got to remember, everyone, that relationship building takes a long time. Think of this as a first date, and you're basically getting to know one another. So don't expect a miracle on the first go around or the second go around. You're not going to be getting this marriage proposal on the second date. Be humble, be kind, and be generous. So rock stars, this is the first of many informative topics that will help you overcome fears and have you walking the walk and talking the talk in no time. The goal is to kick butt, be inspired, create, and conquer. If you want to be a rock star and gain the confidence, then tune in, subscribe, download, give us a great review. The more insights we receive on how much you enjoy this podcast and our other exciting energetic podcast topics, the more we'll be able to provide you with inspiring interviews from artist friends that I know of, people in the legal intellectual property profession, And these are folks that I have had the pleasure of knowing for a long time who've either been in the art industry, have been an entrepreneur, perhaps they're in the legal field, they're musicians, and during some fun, energetic, enlightening topics and interviews, we'll be able to share with you collaboratively on what's worked for us and what hasn't, and some obstacles that we've all had to overcome to make sure that we can keep the focus of doing art and having a really good time at it and simply just keeping the focus. So just as the group Journey sings, Don't Stop Believing, this is one of the best energy-driven songs for this podcast that I that comes to mind today. And just remember that when you feel low and you can't keep moving along, keep your head high, keep that paint flowing or that glass glowing, and make sure to tune in for the next amazing Rockstar Mentor podcast And if you'd like to learn more about me, your host, Sonia Paz, you can see my artwork and a bit more about me at soniapaz.com. If you'd like to learn more about Rockstar Mentor, more podcasts on the horizon, or how to subscribe to some free downloads that I've prepared just for you, or simply to join our Rockstar Mentor Mastermind page on Facebook, then visit us at rockstarmentor.com. I also look forward to your questions. If you have questions, ideas, or something that you would like to have addressed and read on the air through this podcast, then go to rockstarmentor.com, click the Contact Us tab at the top of the page, and there'll be a section there for Q&A and Fan Mail Friday that we will be reading questions that you ask to me on the air, and I'll be addressing those. And that's a fun way for you to sort of hear what we're doing and have you included in the process. So... Thanks everyone for tuning in. Have a great creative day and rock on.